Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the podium, Miss Marvelyn Brown. So I'm going to take you all back. As I laid in my bed on July 17, 2003, I had been sick in the hospital for two and a half weeks. The doctor just did not know what was wrong with me. I had been given everything from a CT scan, an MRI, and a spinal tap, and the doctor still did not know anything. I had a fever of 106. I couldn't eat or use the bathroom on my own. They had basically given up hope. They caught the preacher in, and they told my mom I had 24 hours to live. My mom had begun planning my funeral arrangements, and people was coming up to my hospital bed that I hadn't seen in years, saying their last goodbyes. But through the grace of God, I was stabilized and told I had pneumonia. So I, I laid in my hospital bed. There was a knock at the door, and it was the doctor. And I told him to come in. He said, Marvin, I have something very serious to tell you. And I said, okay, am I pregnant? Because at this time, I knew I had been tested for cancer and everything else. And I knew that I had had nights of unprotected sex. And what worse thing could a doctor tell me that could happen from sex other than pregnancy? And he looked at me and he said, you're not pregnant. You're HIV positive. Growing up, my life was a blur. I was living for the moment and by the day. I was voted most athletic. I played every sport except tennis and golf. My best friend was prom queen. I made every party. I had every shoe and I had all the clothes. HIV, to me, I put it on other people. I put it on gay men, IV drug users, prostitutes. I put it on anything other than me. I never thought I could have HIV, so it was the last thing on my mind. So as I sit there and the doctor told me that, I looked at him and I said, I have AIDS and I'm gonna die. And he said, no, you don't have AIDS and you're not going to die. At that moment, I knew whatever I had thought about HIV was untrue. All the misconceptions I had heard, all the myths, at that moment, it just didn't click. I wanted more information about HIV, so I began picking up the phone. The very first person I called was my best friend. And she told me that she was at work, and as soon as she got off work, she was going to come and see me. So I called my next friend, who was eight months pregnant at this time. And I was actually supposed to be the godmother of the child that she was carrying. And I said, I'm HIV positive. And she told me that she didn't want me to be the child's godmother. And she hung up the phone in my face. So I went on and I called my sister, who was at work and was very nervous. Then I called my aunt and then my mother. And once I got to my mother, she told me, do not tell anyone else anything. And if they truly want to know what's wrong with you, just tell them you had cancer. I didn't have to tell anyone anything else about me because the day I found out I was HIV positive, my community of Nashville, Tennessee found out I was positive as well. My story just started to spread. People were coming up to my hospital just having to get a look and just to see if it was actually true of me having HIV. At this time, I still didn't know anything more than what I knew about HIV at first, which was absolutely nothing. Growing up, when I heard of HIV, I always heard STD separately, so it never dawned on me that I can contract the virus sexually, because it was always STDs and HIV, and then you heard about hepatitis, and I'm thinking, well, if HIV was an STD, it would be in the same bracket as gonorrhea, chlamydia, and herpes, and all these things, and it wasn't true. So at this time, everyone was wondering, well, where did she get HIV from? And it was one day, I was supposed to go to work, and I decided not to go to work. I went to the park instead. And while I was at the park, I seen this guy. And he was really cute. And I just, you know, started looking, really didn't think too much more about it until I seen him looking back. And I decided, well, I may have a chance with this person. So we began talking and exchanging numbers and we started a relationship. He was 23 years old at the time and I was only 19. 
He had his own place, his own car. He had a few jobs. I used to tell my friends about him, and they used to be like, oh, I'm kind of jealous, and you know, like all this other stuff. So I really thought, you know, I was doing something. So it became one night, we were ready to have sex, and he told me he didn't have a condom. And at this time, I began thinking. He knew that I wasn't on birth control, so it meant he could see me as his baby mother. I felt special. When he told me he loved me, it meant I loved myself even more just because he loved me. It made me just feel special and, and honored that he wanted to do all these things. So I proceeded to have sex with him without a condom. And it took me three weeks later to be in the hospital, sick with pneumonia. So I picked up the phone and I called him and I let him know that I was HIV positive. And he told me that he was sorry. So once I got out the hospital, I started living my life. Not necessarily living, I was basically waiting to die. I had given up hope on myself because I had experienced stigma already and I wasn't even positive for more than a week. I went back to school where I was first to just drop out because every time I went somewhere, people would point and laugh and say, oh my God, that's a girl with HIV. I was scared to go around my family because when I was around them, I was forced to eat off paper plates, plastic silverwares. I had to wash my clothes separately. No one really understood what HIV was. I was shunned out of my church. They didn't want me there because I was HIV positive and they always wanted to put fornication in the devil in the same sentence that they put HIV in. So at this time, I started living in my car. I was homeless, I didn't know where to go, you know, who to turn. I just waited to die. I even went to Walmart and I said, I'm gonna take a obituary picture because if I'm gonna die, I want the cover of my obituary to look good. So I went and I, and I took the picture. And one day when I was driving home in my car, my home was the Walmart parking lot, by the way. As I was driving home, I looked up and I seen brake lights. And once I seen these brake lights, I barely jerked the wheel to the left. And I remember losing control of the car. And the car spins across four lanes of traffic. And it turned completely around and it faced the oncoming traffic. A tractor trailer was heading my way full speed. And I seen the tractor trailer hit its brake and smoke start coming up on, on both sides. And I just looked and I was just like, oh man, I'm about to die. So I just closed my eyes, and when I opened them, the tractor trailer was inches away from the front of my car. And I was just like, wow. At that moment, it didn't even dawn on me that I had almost died, and it had absolutely nothing to do with HIV. I didn't realize it until I got home, and I realized how much time, at this time it had been six months, me living with HIV looking in the mirror, waiting to die. Facing stigma, like all these things, it just couldn't, it just, it just didn't settle. And so I realized that I had wasted too much time out of my life, that, that, that I was still somebody with or without HIV. So I wanted to get myself together. So I went out and I got me a job, which eventually let me have a place of my own and I started speaking out about HIV and AIDS. I decided to put my story in the, in the Tennessean and spread my message. At this time, I didn't want anything big to come out of it. I just wanted to let the people know in my Nashville community that it was real because I hadn't owned up to it at this point. If I seen somebody and they said, oh, I heard you have HIV, I didn't accept it. I was just like, oh, then I don't know what they're talking about. And, I, I didn't own it, so I said, I'm gonna put it in the paper and I'm gonna show people that this is true and that this happened to me and that it could happen to them. And so at this time, when I put it in there, I, did, I didn't know what to expect. And I received getting letters and, and, and phone calls from people who were living with HIV in Tennessee and for that matter, all over the, all over the country because news had broke that someone my age I was 20 years old at the time, who, who came out and started sharing their story. So from that moment, 
things just started happening and I became a HIV activist. It was something that I found comfort in doing. And when I always come out and share my story, I try to leave people with three very important messages. I always tell them to get tested because I never would have gotten tested for HIV. When I found out I was positive, the thing that shocked me the most was that the H in HIV stood for human. I thought it stood for heroin user, homosexual, just anything I wasn't. And that shocked me. And so I never would have gotten tested. I was, I was better than HIV. It was too much stuff going on in my life that I was not concerned about that. I wasn't concerned, so I tell people to get tested because now I've been living with HIV for five years. And the most scary part about it would be not knowing that I was HIV positive because in this case, it's better to know your status than not to know. Not only about the people I would have infected, but the virus would have multiplied in my body to the point I probably would have found out when I had full-blown AIDS. And I always tell people, to be responsible. And the reason why I tell people to be responsible is because what if I tell you that the guy who infected me, the reason why he told me he was sorry is because he knew he had it when he gave it to me. It still didn't change the simple fact that I had a choice. I was not raped. I chose to get HIV. They talked about HIV being a preventable disease. I made a choice that now I have to live with the rest of my life. What if he had HIV and he didn't know it because he didn't never been tested like so many people in this world? It still wouldn't have made a difference that I got HIV. I would still have the virus. And I had a choice, so I have to live with that. I have to live with the choices that I made. And looking back on it, I don't like to admit it, but my self-esteem was shocked. I didn't have any self-love. Because if I had so much self-love, why did I give him the power to decide my future and my life? Why didn't I have more control over the situation? I didn't love myself. And I always tell people to get educated. Because the girl who I was supposed to be the godmother of her child, she couldn't see that we both had sex. She had sex and got pregnant. I had sex and got HIV. Our roles could have easily been reversed or easily one of us could have got both. Because people do find out they're HIV positive and pregnant, HIV positive and hepatitis. Just because you have HIV or one of the other, don't, it doesn't eliminate you from anything else. And nowadays, I live a normal, regular life. I have a boyfriend, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy. I see uh, marriage and kids in my future. I have an autobiography coming out. I just won an Emmy. Thank you. I have done a lot and I'm very happy that HIV has been my teacher. It really has. HIV has taught me self-love and self-respect, but HIV doesn't have to be your teacher. My life is great, but I'm telling you, HIV is the disease that you don't want. You, you don't want it. Every day, I take eight horse pills that make me sick to my stomach. I experience everything from vomiting, diarrhea, and nausea. They make me sick. And even though the medicines are pretty bad, the worst thing about having HIV is the stigma that I face on a day-to-day -day basis, even to today. From, pe from people who don't believe that HIV can happen to them, that HIV is a joke. HIV is very, very real. And I'm here to tell you that if it happens to me, it can happen to you. But if you do have HIV, doesn't mean that your life cannot go on. I have HIV. HIV does not have me. I have control of me and my situation. And so I really do leave you all with these three messages, which was get educated, get tested, 
and be responsible. Your future is in your hands. Thank you. Give it up one more time for Marlon Brown. HIV and AIDS is very real. And again, it's important to be tested because it's better to know than to not know. Not knowing could mean disaster for you and lots of other people. And one thing, when you have sex with someone, you get comfortable in a situation about certain things, but you get uncomfortable about a lot of other things. One of those things is knowing if they're infected or not. But you have to think about that. If you're sexually active and you're comfortable enough to lay down with someone unprotected and not be worried about it, shouldn't you be comfortable enough to ask one simple question? Have you been tested? Think about that. Go get tested together. 